complicated, but we are okay. Uh, now, it's war. Again, you guys, this, you won't see this until you get out of college because, again, I think this environment is better than average. But how many of you girls know other girls that have played mind games and strung men along because it was fun? You got no? You must have gone to a great grade school because you have no evil in you whatsoever. It's awesome. Right? Um, realize there's a lot of mind games, and how many girls have you girls dated? Right, you have to date it. Right, I have. I've dated a lot, okay? So trust you me, I've had girls spit on me, hit me, slap me, threaten suicide, slash my tires, and I'm not a jerk. I mean, like, I'm not, you know, I, I know that's hard for me to convince you, but there is some crazy people out there. Now, because of that, you also, any of you guys here of the players or the pickup artists or the gaming community, not the video game, but these guys, right, there's a backlash now occurring. So in general, what happens is boys are stupid and dumb at 13, girls say, ooh, look, we can toy around with them, isn't that funny, ha, 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 the men get stood up, uh, the men are told constantly, they like caring, respect, and that, and we do all that, still gets you nowhere, meanwhile, the girl runs off with her Italian boyfriend to Bulgaria and his Harley or whatever, you know, it doesn't make sense, the old then all of a sudden, there's a, there's a, for every action, there's a reaction. Now you have men, and this is where you ladies got to look out. There's guys that know exactly what to say, exactly what to do. And trust me, you go to the salsa dance scene, you, <laughs> these guys will charm your socks off, but they're only in it for one thing. It has to get laid and then get the heck out. So look out for that. Uh, is, uh, dating is not going to be fun. If you think that you're going to graduate and it's going to be a fun time, be prepared to be let down because, again, you're dating the zombie people. That's the quality and the caliber of the people. It's not Cary Grant comes in and then there's Rita Hayworth. It's not going to be that anymore. And yes, here maybe you found some good people and all that, but you know, don't you guys go to like the city? <laughs> Your, your, your love life is shot. 
So kind of, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You guys may actually have this. You guys know these guys are like the, they've been married 86 years. And the, um, they're 104 and 101. That might be possible for you guys because you got good grounding and you know, uh, to look for the good things. So, cumulatively, everything, socially, culturally, economically, we're all kind of screwed. Do you guys need a break or anything? No, we're good to go. All right, so we'll finish off here. What can we do? So, a couple things. You can take, there's two approaches to take, uh, depending on whether or not you think the United States has a future. There's long-term viability to the United States. However, whether or not there's a future in the United States, there are some things that we can do regardless. So we're going to look at those things that we can do regardless, and then look at kind of like, if you don't trust the United States, is going to be viable, or you do what you do thereafter, right? So things we can do regardless. One, majoring in the right thing. This is the most important thing you can do, because what you major in determines the skill set you get, and then by default determines what kind of uh, wage or income you will make over the rest of your life. Okay. Do not be afraid if you have an undergrad you're not sure about, because you can always go to grad school in the field or get yourself a certification or a skill or a trade that will help you. Uh, key word being skill or trade. It is not, people don't employ you because of your degree, they employ you because of the skill that you bring to the table. So like accounting, engineering, stuff like that is a trade or a skill. Just like a two-year degree, nothing wrong with becoming a plumber or an electrician. Um, you know the Bakken oil field in North Dakota? Like you know what? Welders are making over 100000 a year for welding, uh, also because it's cold and the cost of living is really high, but you get that. Uh, regardless, you don't want to measure what I call puppies and unicorns or a hobby degree. That's just a hobby, and yes, if you read in the book, you'll see that you, know, you can pursue hobbies without having to pay a tuition bill. Uh, your economic hurdles are way too great that it is no longer, you know, follow your heart and the money will follow. No, that, that option is no longer here. We do not have that option anymore. You must look at it uh, as uh, education as an investment that has to pay off. Because not only do you have the debt settled with you for the future or uh, past generations, you're going to have student loans as well. Right? This is the only plug I'm going to give for the book. Buy the worthless. And trust me, it's, it's yes, it's because I'll make money. Yeah, I would like it that if every kid in the country of high school and college age bought it because I think that's like 22 million people and I'd be almost 100 millionaire, which would be great for me, so go by the book and make me happy. More importantly for yourselves or any loved one that you care about, if you have a younger sibling, um, maybe even for yourself, you want to maybe, well, where am I going to go to grad school? This is, a uh, uh, arrogance and ego aside, this is hands down the best book out there for high school and college age kids. Uh, it should be in the hands of every kid out there because it will prevent them from making a very, very costly mistake and kind of being taken in by the education bubble. So do tell friends that that's all I ask, and you know, maybe buy for your little brother. Right? Another thing, what can you do regardless? Minimize your liabilities, okay? Don't have kids, not ever, just don't have kids now. Like, don't have kids until you're married. Uh, kids are a huge liability, I, I think you guys know, but then I look at you know, kids being born to 13-year-old kids, and I'm like, yeah, no. Maybe I'll just say it for the cheap seats. Uh, try to live as cheaply as possible. I don't have credit card. Well, I have a credit card because I have one credit card, but I you know, pay it off every month. Cards are probably the second biggest bubble, aside from education, that you young guys are targeted with by uh, car companies and credit cards and things like that. What happens to the value of a car? It goes down. There's no reason. When one of the best things you can do is learn how to work on cars. Get yourself a cheap piece of crap and just use that to learn how to fix on it. Having uh, auto repair skills is great. Plus for you gentlemen, kind of akin to the motorcycle, you come up all greasy and everything, you get like bonus points, like plus five charisma if you play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, live as cheaply as possible. And also diversify your investments outside of the US. Understand just by having a checking account or a savings account here, you already have enough exposure in terms of investment in the United States. You may want to consider investing in not just necessarily foreign currencies, although that's something, something to consider, but foreign companies. Invest in ETF or mutual funds that specialize in different regions throughout the world, different industries, different sectors, like mining. A lot of people look at commodities because like oil, coal, silver, the precious metals. Uh, yeah, you can invest in the, the metals themselves, but you can also invest in the companies that mine this stuff, which would have a close correlation with the performance of that. So, Ways to diversify outside the United States that will help too. 
Don't let your career ruin your life. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> this is not, I really don't believe we're going to have a resurgence in economic growth where the opportunities are going to be there that if you really want to become a junior executive, you can't. You are still going to be the eagles surrounded by the turkeys, not just your co-workers, but the contract just doesn't, I don't think, has it in it to allow for uh, people your age, even my age, to go and excel if we wanted to. Uh, no one's going to take you seriously, in part because your generation has a reputation of being the OWS, uh, let's poop on a, a cop car kind of thing. So you guys may be more mature, and you may be more reliable employees, but simply because of your age, you consider it age discrimination, they're not going to give you anything responsible. Even, it wasn't until I was like, gosh, almost two years ago, I was given any kind of command commensurate with my skills and experience of what I was capable of doing. And I'm still, I'm only maybe at 30% my capacity. Uh, and, and I think that's all you can really hope for uh, nowadays. I recommend the military, because if there's one place where they will give you a lot of responsibility, it's the military. Also, if you enter when you're 18 or even, you know, 20 or whatever, and you stick in there for 20 years, what happens after 20 years? Hmm? You, uh, you retire you can retire, you get a pension, right. And the military, and I, if I were to do it again, I would have done it. Food, clothing, shelter, health care, everything paid for. Yes, it's a chance to get shot. Yes, I actually do believe it's worth the risk. They will pay for your education, and so if you do it right, you're going to come out 38, 39, 40. And I know you think that's like years down the road, and it really isn't. Well, it is years down the road, but it will go fast. You're not really going to be challenged in the next 20 years. So you might as well go into an institution like the military, have them pay for everything, get your doctorate and whatever, and come out and start. And I know several friends who have done that, and they recommend it to everybody. And now one guy got shot in the leg, but you know, that's the uh, occupational hazard. Also realize there's a traffic jam at the top. Remember how I told you, you know, you think people my age have their act together? No, yeah, yeah, no, we don't. And proof of that, even going older, the baby boomers, they're not retiring soon because they have so mismanaged their financial planning that they can't afford to retire. They still have to work past 65. So it's not like the upper echelons are retiring and then everyone is promoted. There's a traffic jam at the top. So don't think, you know, oh yeah, we're gonna, there's a, a log jam. You see this, well, there's no, you'll run into it. I know uh, you guys haven't worked yet in, in the post-graduation world. But you'll think, you see things like, must hit the ground running, steep learning curve when you start applying for jobs. This is translation for, we're too lazy to train you in. And, and, and they are. You'll be able to say, how do I work? And they say, we don't have time. If you can't figure it out yourself, you need to be a self-starter. You know, and so you go and you, you know, YouTube helps a little bit, but go back 10, 15 years ago, you didn't have that. Always remember you're expendable, and remember you work to live, not the other way around. I used to think, yeah, I'm going to get in with a company, I'm going to show them, and I'm going to work my way up. That opportunity is rarely going to present itself. Take it if you got it, but remember, you're going to die, and you want to have fun. You don't want to work. Ice cream is more fun than using Excel spreadsheets. Now, another thing with your career, things to avoid. Rattlesnakes, you probably want to avoid those. Ebola, that's another thing to avoid. Charlie Sheen, and so on, you probably like to avoid. You also want to avoid HR. You guys know what HR is, human resources? Okay, HR is your recruiters. And it's kind of shifting away from this now, but in the olden days, uh, you, they would do the initial screening for the interviews. So you're in what, accounting, finance? I'm economics. You're in economics, what are you guys, what are you all majoring? Biology, pre-med. Bio let's use biology and pre-med because it's a very precise thing. So you're in biology pre-med, and you talk to them about 